Hi, this is Corey with Norfolk Bike Commuter. I'm joined today by Laurelyn Flowers. She's the owner of No Bad Cats, which is a feline behavior coaching and premium care service here in Norfolk. And she's also a Norfolk resident and frequent bike commuter and bike ride enjoyer. Laurelyn, thanks for joining me. Yeah, absolutely. What is the significance of the bicycle and bike riding in your life? I love being outside. I love being active. Um, I love saving money mm -hmm. on gas. So, you know, basically I've, I've always loved riding my bike since I was little. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to Norfolk and I realized that there were some bike paths and there was actually a way I could commute to one of my places where I work, um, bonus. So mm -hmm. yeah. What got you into bike riding? Was it, uh, something you grew up with? It was, yeah. I mean, ever since I was little, I, in fact, the very best Christmas present I ever got was a bike. I still remember what it looked like. It was silver and very red. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I pretty much spent any day that was nice and not raining outside riding it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I still remember the, uh, the color of the bike that I got when I think I was yeah. five. And it's like this copper colored bike and my mom and dad were just there at the bottom of the stairs. So oh. it's those memories that kind of stick with you and make, yeah. you know, kind of make the bike special. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. do you enjoy specifically about riding in Norfolk? Norfolk is a very picturesque place. I mean, we've got the water, we've got wildlife, and it's a different scene than where I grew up, which was closer to, it was in South Carolina near okay. the mountains. So this, this scenery is a change for me from where, what I grew up around, um, and I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I just, I love that we have the Elizabeth River Trail. That's, to me, the shining star of Norfolk, really. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite thing about Norfolk. Um, I'm actually and, on the Elizabeth River Trail uh, right now. Mm -hmm. This is a bridge that, uh, this is called Myrtle Park, right? Yes, so yes. We're, on, uh, we're just across from the Myrtle Park Bridge, yep. and we're on the ERT. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just, and it's also biking is something my husband and I can both share a passion of because he loves riding his bike too. He sometimes commutes back and forth to work. Um, so it's just another thing that we can share together too. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you do see the bike as not just a form of recreation, but a form of transportation. Yeah. It's one of the primary yeah. ways you get around the city. It is. And I mean, with as great of a, place as we have here with the scenery and the breezes i mean if you've got if you can make the time to do that bike commute why not mm -hmm. absolutely now that doesn't keep you from driving necessarily and it's not right sort of a well the car is bad and the bike is good it's right. just a combination of whatever works best for you on that day mm -hmm. exactly what yeah. barriers exist to kind of prevent you or, or your husband for that matter from, from biking around i the main thing that both of us have would say we've run into is for one example construction um, there was a section of the Elizabeth River Trail that was shut down temporarily which was actually a, a major part of my route to where one of the places where I work mm -hmm. and um, that made me forced to find a detour that was a lot less desirable of a route uh, it, it involved me going on a much busier um, route with lots more cars and mm -hmm. I've also noticed although I really appreciate the bike lanes that have been developed over the course of the past decade mm -hmm. I still don't feel completely safe having no barriers between myself and the cars mm -hmm. because there have been a few times um, drivers of cars weren't paying attention or either were not aware of the rules of the road mm -hmm. and that makes me very wary about riding anywhere that doesn't actually have barriers. Some sort of physical protection, right. something substantial and consequential. Yes, yeah. right. Uh, yeah. A little bit earlier, we were talking about the route that you take on your bike and the way that you've had to, that you've had to divert it a yeah. bit because of the construction. Can you describe yeah. that route a little more? Uh, sure. Thoroughly? Sure. Yeah. So I start over by ODU. Well, I start around the neighborhood here, and I go okay. over by ODU, and there's a section called the rail yard um, that's being developed. And that section of sidewalk, which was about a block or two, pretty significant chunk, which is right alongside of Hampton Boulevard, a very, very busy road, if anyone's not very familiar with Norfolk. Right. 
Um, not a place I would ever want to ride my bike um, if I'm going to be in the road. Yeah. And so I, yeah, I was, normally I would be on a nice sidewalk on, you know, following the trail, but I was having to cross Hampton Boulevard and ride on another busy street, um, 26th or 27th, um, alongside of cars, again, with no physical barrier. And that definitely took away from the potential of having a pleasant ride. Mm -hmm. It just made me more stressed and yeah, wary. Now, uh, I know you drive, I drive, so it's not like as bike riders and even people who prefer to commute by bike, we are not aware of some of the needs of drivers or people who, who do primarily drive. Uh, but speaking from a driver's perspective and having to deal with bikers on the road, mm -hmm. as it were, do you feel comfortable driving with bikes on the road? Uh, just like you, kind of the inverse of whether you feel uncomfortable or not with being a, a cyclist mm -hmm. sharing with cars? I do. Uh, I feel for the most part, the cyclists I see around town look like they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. My primary concern is the car drivers. So, but yes, I, I <clears throat> it makes me very happy to see people cycling. Um, I would love to do it all the time myself, so, yeah. What changes do you think Norfolk could make citywide in specific applications in whatever way to improve cycling infrastructure, cycling conditions in the city, or to encourage more people like yourself and like your husband to get out and do it more? I would say two things. One more barriers, more physical barriers, um, such as some, there is a small section of ones on, um, I think it's Llewellyn, and there's a couple areas that we have them. I think we definitely need more of those. More bike lanes with barriers in general uh, would be wonderful because the more options we have to get places on bikes safely, mm -hmm. then I think the more and more people will utilize that opportunity. And then the other thing I would say is more education mm -hmm. to drivers um, about the rules of the road, who has the right of way. I did see a billboard recently that was promoting making room for the bikers, um, just making sure the public is aware because um, not everybody grew up riding a bike sure. or being taught those rules. So making it public knowledge, doing some PSAs sort of thing um, to make sure people know and don't have an excuse to say, I didn't know. Sure. Um, I think that could benefit. Absolutely. Yeah. If you were making a 10 second elevator pitch to someone trying to convince them to ride their bike more, what do you think you'd do? Ride your bike. You're going to burn calories. You're going to get outside. It's going to boost your endorphins. Mm -hmm. It's good for your health. It's good for your physical health. It's good for your mental health. Um, it also builds your connection to your, your surroundings and your community. Mm -hmm. The people. I mean, when, I, when I'm biking on the Elizabeth River Trail, most other bikers will say, hey, you yeah. know, it's kind of, kind of nice to have that connection, instant connection with strangers. Mm -hmm. One of, uh, one of my favorite things about bike riding is when I pass somebody else. They could be on a bike, they could be walking, they could just be at their house or outside of business, any number of different contexts. I just wave to them. I yeah, say hi. Same. And it makes Norfolk feel more like home to me. Yes. Does it have the same kind Agreed. of impact for you? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I told Laura Lynn that uh, at the end of the interview, I'd be more than happy to let her shamelessly plug <laughs> Uh, part of why Norfolk Bike Commuter exists is to build a better Norfolk through cycling use and the promotion of better infrastructure. What that often accomplishes is not just a overall sort of ambiguous benefit to the city, uh, but oftentimes that's also economic benefit. And part of the give and take of improving these conditions is understanding that when people feel safer getting around and when they have options and when they have the freedom to choose how they want to get about a city, businesses flourish. Businesses like... <laughs> no bad no cats. Bad cats. <laughs> and actually, it's just I don't have a location. It's not a, a, it's not a store or a shop. It's, a, it's basically, if you think about a dog trainer, mm -hmm. 
I'm a cat trainer. I would do behavioral coaching. I would offer that as well as premium cat care, mm -hmm. meaning you want someone to spend really good quality time with your cats. You don't want them to just pop in, feed them, throw some food in the bowl and scoop the litter and leave. I would Could be... have a robot do that. Exactly. <laughs> the real personal touch as well as any kind of medications they're on. Mm -hmm. I have a good bit of experience with just about any kind of um, medication as well. So, But the uh, coaching is something that um, I love because I can do it from anywhere. I can mm -hmm. do it for people that are in other states. I can do it virtually. I can do it one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. in person if it's local. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, that actually, I think, feeds back into the transportation aspect well, because yeah. if you are dealing with a local customer, the more options you have to get around Norfolk, the better you can suit the needs, not yeah. only for running your business, but for the customer. Yeah. And especially if you're traveling by bike, that's one way for you to decrease the overall cost of your business. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Lauren Lynn, thank you so much for yeah, joining me thank for the interview. You. Thank you for uh, picking a great yeah. day. It's beautiful Oh, here. it was. It was perfect. And, uh, Thanks for riding your bike. All right.